We're very, very, very happy to be back. Um, thanks for your patience. Okay, it's back to normal, right? Um, so I got a guitar here, uh, which you can't hear yet, but you will soon. Um, and again, I'm Jason, digital media librarian here at NC State. Um, very happy to have you as part of the stream. What we're gonna do today here in the Digital Media Lab at DHL Junior Library is finish a song that my band, The Impossible Shapes, is prepping for a brand new record. We have made a record since 2009. And over the last year and a half of, uh, you know, some, some restrictions that were very appropriate, uh, we decided to use uh, the fact that any, any computer that you own is essentially a recording studio to our advantage. And, uh, so we have members in Oakland, California, Bloomington, Indiana, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and me here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, so uh, I'm not going to give too much information about this song away. And in fact, my bandmates don't even know I'm doing this. But uh, we're excited about this new record. And this is the last thing that needs to be done. I have to add guitar to one of the songs. So we're going to do that together using GarageBand. Um, so let me just get, let me switch uh, some inputs here okay so you should see GarageBand on your screen I'm gonna add uh, I'm gonna add the song to GarageBand so we just drop it in there um, great so song is in there we can see the waveforms I have GarageBand on monitoring, so let's see. Let's just be sure that we're actually hearing music as it comes out. Play here. We're not actually hearing any music as that comes out, so I may have to do some. Uh, let me add something in OBS real quick. Always happens this way. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Um, uh, by that, by always happens this way, I mean um, it is strange to me that suddenly it will work before we play and then it will just stop. So let's see if I can do this again. Still not hearing anything. Which is sort of important because we want to be able to hear something. I'm going to double check another thing here. We'd very much like you to hear this, this song as I record it. It's very important that that is true. So I'm setting up the guitar here to play through track channel one. All right, so that seems fine. So what do we want? Let me monitor out of there. So one second as I make a quick change let's see if this does it So that kind of helped. Now I can only hear myself in the left channel. One second. So let's see if that does the trick. Still got some stuff coming out of GarageBand. That's great. like you to be able to hear this <laughs> it would be great so let's see if I can make that happen so 
So, it's been a struggle this afternoon. And it's not getting any easier at the moment. Let's see if we can make this happen in a different way. So, one second. Hello, check. Okay, so that's great. I wonder if I can do output. here. Okay, all right, so sorry about that. Um, it's an interesting conundrum right now. Uh, I may have to take a quick break. I was just talking to no one right there. I think my audio was gone. As I was saying, it was a good learning experience to think about routing audio, but we're also involving a whole world of like online streaming, uh, which can make things a little bit tricky. So um, I, I think I'm gonna hop off for a second, um, come right back. Uh, I'm gonna, well, here, let me try one more thing. I'm just gonna try this once more. I'm gonna add an audio input. Yeah, clear. It wasn't, unfortunately, it wasn't muted. I was just using the wrong thing. <laughs> I wish I had been. That would have been funnier if I were muted. Uh, hey, check. Okay, so as soon as I add, as soon as I add audio, okay, you can still hear me. Claire, one question while you're out there and to all of our audience. Can you hear that music at this point? I love magic, but I'm not a huge fan of when magic works like this. There is music playing. Okay, then we have made it. Everyone, we've made it. We've totally done it. So, um, very glad about that. Okay, so. All right, let's just get into it. So we're gonna listen to this song and then figure out how to add to it only using onboard effects from GarageBand. But the first thing I need to do is I need to tune this guitar. So we're very excited we will soon be lending this very guitar through our tech lending program here at Sea State University Libraries. Um, I guess it doesn't hurt that a person who helps run these spaces loves playing guitar. But also, we have these music spaces and media spaces, so having instruments for y'all to use while you're here just seems like a good idea. So. 
struggling right now in my fifth pocket to find a pick. I like the orange ones. I'm going to turn on the tuner here in GarageBand. I'm going to see how close we are. We're not that close. It feels good to have done this. So, um, tuning is challenging. <laughs> Trying to hit that zero, get it right in the green zone. These are brand new guitars, never been professionally set up. Brand new strings, just out of the box. <laughs> so, um, many of our favorite digital audio workstations have built in effects, amp modeling, things of that nature. Um, I'm not, a, I would prefer to be able to just have an amp in here and pedals and get natural sounds, but the nature of today is I want to show you how, um, you know, how it can be done in your home studio or in your car <laughs> if you have an interface. We're running this guitar through a digital interface called a PreSonus. It's in all of our media spaces. It's converting the physical uh, sound waves that I'm creating through the electric guitar into ones and zeros. You can see in GarageBand here that when I play, it lights up and everything sounds great. So um, what I can do, so here I'm at Audio 2, I, I, this song, let's take a listen to this song for a minute. To me it has some, somewhat of a, you, uh, I don't know. A little bit mid mid tempo, slower than mid tempo. Um, a little bit spacey. Uh, there's a lot of. I mean, by spacey, I mean uh, like outer space. I don't mean there's a lot of space in the song. There's actually a lot of notes in the song. So, um, uh, I I have a couple choices to make musically. Let's see what we what we think. So um, I'm immediately thinking of Pink Floyd. So I'm gonna find a, a, a electric guitar sound that I like. I'm gonna definitely go with distorted. What happened? That doesn't necessarily seem right. It's a little bit. Now, now here's the thing. I, you don't have to go with the settings, but I don't think big hair harmonics is necessarily where I should have started. Um, I'm going to look for something that kind of has uh, a little bit of uh, just something that's already got maybe a little bit of delay on it. Let me see if there's anything that seems like it would have that. Uh, not these things. Let's go to clean guitar. So mystery chorus might be cool. Dyna trem maybe. Clean echoes might be what we're looking for. Let's see what clean echoes sounds like. Yeah, I like that. I want it to have a little bit more drive, so I'm gonna turn on distortion on the amp modeler. I'm gonna turn distortion all the way up. And um, compression has this, makes things kind of squeeze into notes. So if I turn the compression down, it won't be as frozen. So this has got like an 80s Pink Floyd thing going on. And I want the echo to be increased a little. I'm going to increase the reverb a little too. So let's see what we can do with that. So I, this is, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna start playing around. Um, and then we'll comp, meaning we'll just make stuff happen. 
when we want to. That's the nice thing about multi-track recording. A real quick reminder, this is a track, like the, the track of music that's already been recorded. I'm adding a track of music, and I'm going to be adding a ton more too. On, we'll see how it goes. I played bass on this song in the original recording, and I don't, like, I'm just kind of remembering. I liked all of that. Um, rather than listening back, I'm just going to keep it. I have the affordance of having multiple tracks here, so I'm going to add a second one. I'm going to use track input one. I want to hear my instrument as I play in chord. All right. Um, I should have done this in a different way, because I want, I'm going to delete that track. I'm going to make a, a second track that's exactly like this with the same settings. I like that. I like that sound. Um, now I'm just kind of going to kind of guess about what I was doing last time. Um, something that you'll learn after what feels like hundreds of years of recording is that sometimes it's better to just throw something on the wall. By on the wall, I mean play something to a, a, a recording device and see if you like it again. I really love guitar harmonies, and um, I've gotten pretty good at harmonizing with parts I've already played. So what we're going to do when I when I when I record again, we're going to hear what I just did, and then I'm going to add along to it. Let's see how well I can do. So that note shouldn't exist. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get rid of it from the other thing here. So I'm splitting the track, and then I know that like I want to start here. If I turn this one, two, three, four thing on, and I click record, it gives me a little count in. So. See, I almost got the first one. So, I'm, and then what's the second one that I'm playing? All right, let's. I'm gonna guess again.
Yeah, I think that I don't need to mess around with the harmonies later. So let's. I've just decided that I'm not gonna. I, I'm gonna let whatever I did first go. Let's hear what those sounded like. I'm going to solo this first one because I want to know what notes I'm playing. So I played... Alright, so, yep. I wasn't able to just improv my way through it, so I actually had to learn it. Here we go. I forgot to unmute it. <laughs> there we go. Let's try it again. I need to hear the song. I think that third one could just be uh, a bent G, like David Gilmore from Pink Floyd would do. There we go, building a part. Almost. I like what I did up there. Let me delete these. Imagine paying to do this with all your friends. So the command Z is our friend, a really good friend, when we forget how much we've done. down to D there and then should work I really I'm digging this echo That's better.
should have st stuck with what I thought and not done anything. So, um, the cool thing about multi-track editing <laughs> is that you really don't, like, I can go and edit all this stuff out later, but I'm doing it now, because that was just pointless. <laughs> I like that part and I'm going to redo it because I just hit the wrong note. So I'm going to do it on this track uh, so I don't have to redo it. Then I'll add the other chorus part here. Ah, but I need to be able to hear what I'm doing. Let's try that again. Screamy thing here. So I need to I need to figure out what these chords are. Uh, so. The feeling my uh, my friend Aaron who wrote this likes major chords so. sounds more Gilmore like to me so by that I mean David Gilmore and not the Gilmore girls uh, so maybe I'm gonna do another track here that's uh, duplicate 
and we will do that bridge accordingly. tracks right now so echo left and then echo right and then bridge rhythm because I'm about to do a guitar solo I don't think the song actually need one but you know here we are so I'm gonna do this with a totally different track a totally different sound. I just love distorted guitar. Let's find one that's cool. Super fuzz. How's that sound? <laughs> Maybe it's a little too compressed. Um, Let's see what happens. Uh, the name of the Black DI means that it's a direct input box out of a Marshall stack sound, um, and it's actually not too bad. Nice thing about GarageBand lately is that they're sharing a lot of sounds, free sounds with Logic, and you can of course buy some plugins and spread them around. But uh, yeah, love it. Let's do this. I'm just gonna um, improv my way through a solo. I hope you all love it. I like that sound. Okay, so we gotta get to the beginning of the bridge here. Alright, so I should probably... I don't need to hear everything that I've done, because I'm not playing along to it. I just need to hear the, the band. So we'll start here. frankly can't hear that at all, so I'm going to turn this down. Beginning of that, I messed a note up. So I'm going to increase this and we'll just jump right in. So Yeah, 
let's see what we can do. Classic. This song has sort of a pop music thing going on, so I'm gonna duplicate that and try a different one. And uh, but I like that sound. I'm gonna mute that, and we're just gonna jam along here. of that and I'm gonna leave it there I'm not even gonna try to redo some of it we're gonna do a thing called comping in a second where I just build a solo out of all these remember the studio is also an instrument uh, so don't be afraid to use it as such uh, recording is fake unless you're recording a band live and pretending that it's live but that I mean you can afford to make things different and like mix them together that's the fun part uh, so here we go one more track of this Uh, I like the way it started the first one, and I don't actually remember how I did it, which it's good that we recorded it. something like that all right so we've got three now um now the fun part is listening to them all at the same time sometimes magic happens most of the time it doesn't uh let's see them I'm gonna turn these down and turn this up let's see where we are Possible to hear. <laughs> Sorry, mixing mistakes. All right, so I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. We're gonna to listen to the first solo and see how it. Pretty good solo. Um, let's hear it again. I turned the compressor up so we could hear it in there better. I like it up to there. Let's see what this one sounds like. Definitely made different choices, and I don't like them as much, so I'm going to um, move this. I'm going to keep this segment solo, but I'm going to move it down here just so it's not in our way. Um, what the hell heck did I just do? Huh. What is 
what did I just do? <laughs> I guess I cut a segment of solo. Oh. There we go. So, I'm getting, let's hear what the end of it sounds like. I really like that, like, kind of psychedelic thing there in the middle. But I think, let's see. Alright, we have an opportunity here. I don't remember liking anything about the last solo, but let's listen to it. I remember liking the second one better, at least in the middle. You just noticed I just deleted it because who needs it? Um, all right, so we're going to deal with these two. Hopefully the band will like them. I'm into it. So the opportunity we have here, we, we can try one of two things. So we can do some automation and see what happens if suddenly in the middle of the solo, uh, we get like a hard pan to the left and a hard pan to the right. Oops, I did that in one volume. I want to pan. I'm changing this to pan. Panning is a uh, stereo effect of hearing things in left or right channels that. Um, make you have the feeling in stereo that you're in a spatially organized place. So probably a terrible description, but it is the real thing. I like that. I'm not sure if the band will, but what are you going to do? Um, the end of it needs something, so I'm going to add... I want to see... That's all I need to do. I'm going to add this on another track. Cool if I played in the right key. I think I had to lead into that. That last note is incorrect in the second solo, so. Let's do it again. Wow. 
I'm so confused. <laughs> Guess it's a key change. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> oh yeah, it totally is. God. And maybe I like the way it sounded because it isn't in key. <laughs> Also kind of work and then Let's see how that sounds. Yeah. Only our Twitch audience will know. It's fun to record loud when you can't hear anything. It doesn't help because you can't play notes right. I like it. And now we're going to add the end of the song. Okay. Let's go back. Echo left here.
Unexpected, but fun. So, um, I don't think we need two of the echo things. I think it's just, there's so much going on in this song already. I'm going to get rid of the doubling of the echo chords. And I liked whatever it was I did there. Um, I think at the end there, we need to bring back these, the, um, the DIs with, uh, the solo, because I think that playing sort of a queen-like uh, chorus effect that echoes what the vocals are doing would be kind of cool. So, not kind of, it would be cool. So... Like right here, something like... building harmonies, you'll see it's always majestic. So, yeah, that's just, you know, just the melody. Let's see what happens when we add the queen-like harmonies. Here we go. Should do it on the right beat, though. Yeah, already cooler. Mm, really did really did that one in. Um, then it's when you add the third part where it gets really nice. There it is. And so this will be a cool, like, chordal thing that has a certain quality to it that, well, you'll see. It's gonna be weird because the automation's on it, but that doesn't matter. This is just for test purposes. All right, so. Oh, oh.
Cool. So there's this other backing vocal thing that's going on that I really dig. Um, so I'm going to do a duplicate setting and do another duplicate setting. The person who's helping us mix all this is going to love that I sent him several, several tracks to mix into the new song. So, um, you'll hear it. This, uh, so it's kind of like around there. I just thought of this. I wonder if it'll work. So, I am the wolves hide, wolves hide, wolves hide. I'm going to add guitars doing like a third part of the canon. And it's going to be bendy because that sounds cool. Okay. It's harder than I expected. So let's see though. I like it. I might change the sound of that, but so far. And now, of course, we have to add harmony. Because, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, and. I like it. I do want a different sound though. I need something that stands out. Cool. Okay, so I've recorded this stuff. I can go to this channel and then just pick a different sound. It's not going to like that I do that because, well, we'll see. Because I've made a bunch of changes. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to go to the crunch guitar. Let's see what, in. no, it's a little too compressed. I imagine this is Tom Payne and the Heartbreakers. Let's see what that sounds like. Just moved it to Fat Amp. Let's see what that sounds like. Um, I don't like that. I do like that. <laughs> I do like that. So let's make them both there. Let's hear what that little last part sounds like.
All right, I'm into it. Okay, so we've made it. Let me turn on, I'm looking at automation again. I want these to be panned in the middle again. Um, here. Uh, actually, no, let's pan them all to the right. I'm going to make a little story happen. Oops. Make sure it's in pan. will be in the left side. Make it be over there. I don't need to automate them. All right, let's uh, give a listen to this whole darn song and see what we got. I'll do some live mixing as we're doing it. Turn off this guitar so you can't have to hear me futzing around with it. All right, thanks for hanging out. Those of you who saw it, I hope you enjoyed some of the things. Let's hear what we've done. Um. I enjoyed doing it and also I needed to. So what you just saw was a way to construct a guitar part on a, uh, or really an instrumental part using GarageBand on a Mac with a PreSonus interface. Yeah. I like the way this is all working.
I'm not sure how much of that you could actually hear because we were having audio problems. But I, you just saw me listening to it, and I like it. So, um, you're probably hearing some echo, too, uh, which is always great. Uh, I'm going to say we did it. We made a song. Hopefully, you'll be able to hear the song uh, 